Hello everyone and welcome back to another Power Automate video. This is going to be quite a fun one and I hope you'll enjoy it. In this video I'm going to show you how you can directly integrate um, Apple iOS devices with Power Automate and some of the fun things you can do with that. So I'm going to give you two demonstrations and then we will uh, show you how to build those. The flow part of this is pretty simple because if you're using watching this you already know how to use flow. Um, it's the iOS integrating with Flow that I want to show you. So let's get on with it and I'll show you the two demos first and then we'll set about building them. So both of these flows make use of the um, shortcut system built into iOS. In this example, we are a tennis coach that has had a bunch of students on a course and they've completed the course and he's clicked on his tennis course completed shortcut. This has executed a flow and passed the student's name to it, which has used um, the populate a word document action and sent back a PDF to the iOS device, which the coach can then just send straight on to the student. So they've got a record of their achievement. So that's the first one. In this second um, example, I'm not executing from the shortcut system, but directly from the photo sharing option in iOS. Um, this is a photo of Tim, Gerard and myself at South Coast Summit last weekend. And you can see here, I'm just adding a description of the photo after having to choose the upload to SharePoint um, share action. And uh, it will upload it straight to a SharePoint document library. And we can go and view it there in a moment. Um, so this is us at South Coast Summit. And uh, it was a good event, so if you haven't been, I highly recommend it. So now it's doing the upload, and it should give us a confirmation back. So it has uploaded it, and that is done. Okay, so I am now recording my iOS device, and the first thing I'm going to go into is shortcuts. And I've got my tennis course completed shortcut there, but I will create a new one. Um, and the first thing it goes into is asks me to add my first action. Now, if you've ever used Power Automate, this will actually seem quite familiar. So I'm going to click on add action. I'm going to say ask for input. And it's defaulted the input type to text. So that is good. And I'm going to put student name as the prompt. Um, and then I'm going to add a new action. Uh, so I'll say done on that. And then I'm going to add a URL action. And this is just um, an action that allows you to store a URL. And I've got the URL for the Power Automate flow in my clipboard. So I'll paste that in there. Click done on that. And then the next one I'm going to do is um, get contents of URL. Don't worry about it being get contents. We'll fix that in a second. So it's automatically picked the URL that I previously specified as the URL to pull data from. And if I press this little button um, next to it, it gives me some more options. So you can see the method is set to get. I don't want to get for this one. I want a post action. And then it allows me to specify some additional options. So I do need to add some headers. So the first header I need to add is going to be content dash type. And that's going to be application forward slash JSON. Uh, and then in the request body, I'm going to add a new field. It's going to be text. And that is going to be name for the student's name. And here I need to pick, just like dynamic content in Power Automate, I'm going to scroll through my variables and I'm going to pick provided input. And then from there, um, I'm going to just pull those options back up. And so my next action is going to be show um, and it's going to be a actually want quick look yeah there we go quick look 
and it's going to be show contents of URL in Quick Look. And that is basically it. So if I click done now, uh, and it's this one here, I think Quick Look, I'm going to rename it. So if I click edit, no, it's not done there. Rename, and we'll call this Tennis Cert 2. Say done. So if I run this now, and I'll just put in my name, Paul. First time you run it, it will ask you to allow permission for it to connect to that address. So I'm just going to hit allow. It won't do that on subsequent runs. And there it is. The flow has run and it has returned back pool.pdf. Now, from within here, you don't need to end it at show contents of URL in the original version. I had it sending the PDF via WhatsApp um, and there are loads of options of stuff you can do in here. So, you know, it's a good first example. So try that one out and see how you get on. And now we will move on to the second example, which is slightly more complicated, but is along the same lines. Okay, so for the second flow, um, we'll take a look at the flow for that as well. It's also a very simple one. Here you can see my document library where I've uploaded photos directly from my device. Here is the flow. Now it's got a bit more in this one. We've got a name, which is the file name, the description, which is the user provided input, the date and the image data, which is going to be a base 64 string. Uh, that Compose doesn't do anything, I was just troubleshooting. So then we're going to create a file in the SharePoint library and we're going to do a base64 to binary expression. So we're going to take that trigger body image data and then convert it back from base64 and then write it out of the file. And then we're going to update the item that we've just created and put in the description. And then finally, we've got our response. This one's slightly different. So we've got content type again, and we've got text forward slash plain. And then it says photo of dynamic content of the description from the trigger action uploaded. Um, and what we'll do is I'll keep on recording my screen at the same time as the iOS device. So the first thing I need to do is copy this URL again. And I'm going to email that to myself. Right, so I've emailed that to myself and put it in my clipboard and I'm recording my device again. So I'm going to add a new shortcut. Let's just rename it from the start and we'll call this um, upload to SharePoint 2. So we're going to add an action And then we will say sharing. And then I think we need to choose share. So we're going to say share input and we're going to say shortcut input. Now, the first thing it says is re receive images and 18 more. So I'm going to click on that. And this dictates where this share action will appear from. And it's got all kinds of stuff in there. So I'm just going to click on the clear button and just say images. So it's going to say receive images input from nowhere. And then I'll click this show in share sheet. And that's what makes it appear on the share list when you click that little up arrow thing. So we'll say if there is no input, we'll stop and respond. And our response will be no photo. Selected, and then I am going to get rid of this share shortcut input here, and I am going to add a resize action. Add action, and I'm going to search for resize image. So it's going to be resize shortcut image, and I am going to pick 
1900. And I'm going to let it do the height automatically. And then I'm going to do a convert action. Convert image. So I'm going to convert my resized image to JPEG because iPhones by default use that HEIC format. And then I'm going to add an encode action. And that's going to be this base64 encode. Um, and so I'm going to encode my converted image with base64. Now I'm going to do ask for input. And the prompt is going to be photo description. And then I am going to add a URL action. And then I'm just going to paste from my clipboard the Power Automate URL. You can just put the URL straight into the Get Contents action, but it's just a bit easier. So the next action suggestion, it's come up with it anyway, Get Contents of URL. And then I'm going to click the little thingy. And I'm going to change the method again to post. And then I am going to add a new field. And it's going to be description. And that is going to be from my provided input. And then I'm going to add a name. Now this is going to come from the shortcut input. So it's a little bit different. So shortcut input, I'll click on that and then I can click into it and specify which data from the shortcut I want. So I could pick any of these bits of metadata from the photo that's come through from the share, but it's defaulted it to name and that is what I want. Uh, and then I'm going to add another one, which is going to be date. And that again is going to come from the shortcut input. So let's scroll along, shortcut input. But this time I'm going to choose date taken. And now we need the image data. So I'm going to say image data. And that will be the output of the base64 encoded. Um, and so this is our payload. We've got those four values and this will be enough to get it up to Power Automate, but it'd be nice to have um, a response. So then the next thing I'm going to do is do show and it's going to say show result and it's going to be get contents of URL. And because we're specifying the content type, when we run this, um, you know, it's it will display it properly. So I'll say done on that. Now, if I pick this now, it will just run and say no photo selected. So I need to go into my photos. And if I go into my Co Summit, um, so let's pick this one. And I will choose the share button and we should now have upload to SharePoint 2. And that is going to be Paul, Laura, oh my God, Andrew, Charlie and Alex at SC at SCS. So I'll click done on that. Again, it'll give us this prompt, but we only need it once. So we'll say always allow. And that will go ahead and do its thing. And it gives us the response back so we know it's worked. And if I now go back to my SharePoint document library, there we've got the photo's been uploaded and it's got the descriptions. Um, and that's quite a neat little tool. So 
Let me know your thoughts. Obviously, this is more of an iOS shortcuts tutorial than a Power Automate tutorial, and I've only discovered them myself recently, so I am no expert, but it is quite interesting to see the things that you can do um, and how it natively understands JSON via its dictionary abilities. So um, give it a try and uh, see what you think. Let me know in the comments if there's other use cases you can think of for these kind of actions, and I'll see if I can build them up. But um, it's quite a neat way of getting into Power Automate. Obviously, I have done it all with the HTTP request is received action, which is a premium action. So if you don't have that available to you, this won't work. You might be able to do it by instructing iOS to save a JSON file into OneDrive. Um, I haven't tried that yet, but it is a possibility. Um, anyway, let me know your thoughts and I hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers. Bye bye.